Well, let's begin with something everybody knows, that is spheres. The equation for a sphere of radius r and center x0, y0, z0 is given by x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared plus z minus z0 squared equals r squared. What we're often going to do is divide both sides of that equation by r squared. And the reason for that is modifying this form of the equation yields the other quadratic surfaces that we're going to look at. So the first thing that we could consider is changing the r squareds to have different values depending on whether you're below the x or y or z term. And this yields an ellipsoid where these constants a, b, and c are called semi-axis radii. And they, they tell you how this ellipsoid is, is stretched or squashed along the three different axes. There are a couple of special cases, some special terminology, prolate spheroids and oblate spheroids. You don't really need to know about that, but, but maybe you'll run across that term now and then. And you might want to think about what happens in the special case where a, b, and c are all equal. One small change will take us from the equation of an ellipsoid to that of a hyperboloid. All we need to do is change one of the signs in front of the x, y, or z term from positive to negative, and we get something that is much less compact. It opens up out to infinity along the axis whose variable has that minus sign in front of it. Now this is called a one-sheeted hyperboloid. It is a connected surface, a very cool one at that. Okay, next up we move from a one-sheeted hyperboloid to something called a two-sheeted hyperboloid. This is actually a disconnected surface, and it's obtained by having two negative signs in that equation that we've been working with. In this case, the one quadratic term left that is positive tells you the axis along which the two-sheeted hyperboloid opens. Both types of hyperboloids are common, and they're really interesting surfaces. Next up comes the paraboloids. We'll begin with an elliptic paraboloid that is a different form of equation in that uh, one of the terms in the equation that we've been working with is now not quadratic, but a linear term. And the linear term tells you the axis along which an elliptic paraboloid opens up. So this looks something like a parabola that's been spun about an axis, but might be eccentric, depending on the values of a and b. Now elliptic paraboloids look like ellipses when you cut perpendicular to, in this case, the z-axis. There are also hyperbolic paraboloids which look like hyperbole when you cut in cross-section to the appropriate axis. The equation for a hyperbolic paraboloid looks like that of an elliptic paraboloid, but with an extra minus sign in there. As you can see, these are really interesting surfaces, a little bit hard to visualize, but really cool surfaces. We can also consider cones, which can be thought of as something like a degenerate hyperbola, either uh, one-sheeted or two-sheeted, where it, it comes down to a point. Now, these cones have their own quadratic expression, off of which you can read the axis along which the cone opens up. And what you want to keep in mind here is that these uh, formulae always lead to cones that open in both directions. Lastly, we have cylinders, which consist of uh, planar curves, such as an ellipse or a parabola or a hy hyperbola, but which extend off in a third direction in an unbounded manner. And the equations for these are just the usual planar equations with the third variable left out. So that's it. That's our basic family of surfaces. At this point, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed with all those equations. Oh my gosh, how am I ever going to remember that? Look, don't worry about it. Knowing how to draw accurate pictures of surfaces, that's not what calculus is about. Memorizing equations, that's not what calculus is about. 
The reason that we're going over this is so that you have some familiarity and that you can recognize these surfaces when we see them later on in calculus. And we are going to see them later on in calculus. We will not be seeing them again for quite a long time. We're going to have to wait until we get to surface integrals or a couple of other things. But for now, what we're going to do is focus on building up our geometry and algebra.